Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 4-color Aragorn the Uniter deck, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This 4-mana 5-5 legendary human noble says whenever we cast a white spell, create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. Whenever we cast a blue spell, we get to scry 2. Whenever we cast a red spell, Aragorn deals 3 damage to target opponent. And whenever we cast a green spell, target creature gets plus 4 plus 4 until end of turn. So Aragorn wants to be played in a multicolor deck, where we can cast lots of multicolor spells that may be able to trigger several of Aragorn's abilities at once. So that's exactly what we're trying to do here. And taking a look at our deck, I've split it up into a few different categories, starting with the first one, which is Mana Acceleration, ways to add more mana to potentially play Aragorn on turn 3 as opposed to turn 2, because a turn 3 Aragorn will provide a lot of extra value as we get to play those multicolored spells a turn sooner to enable Aragorn, and that will potentially snowball into an early win. So in our Mana Acceleration category, we've got an Avacyn's Pilgrim, which can tap to make white mana, playing this over the other mana elves that can only tap to make green, because sometimes if they they only make green mana, we may not have the right colors to necessarily play Aragorn ahead of schedule. Then we've got Explore as well as Growth Spiral to play an extra land to draw a card. And then Into the North can also find a snow land, and that's why we have those snow covered basics to search up. Paradise Druid makes one mana of any color and has hexproof as long as it's untapped, so it's a safe investment. Invasion of Ergamon is the only battle in our deck, can discard and draw when it's played, and can also make a treasure token so that can set up a turn 3 Aragorn. Then we've got Catilda, which lets our humans tap for one of their colors, so that's also perfect alongside the human tokens that we can keep making with Aragorn, as those will all turn into mana creatures, and then at some point we can pay 6 mana to put plus 1 counters on the team. We've got Merleaf Pixie, tapping for either blue or green, and then of course as a multicolored creature can also let us scry and give something plus 4 plus 4 with Aragorn out. Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart are two ramp artifacts that can also fix our colors. Cultivate at 3 mana is still great value, despite not being the best alongside Aragorn necessarily. Then a Domri can either help us make more mana with the plus 1, can also fight an opposing creature with a minus 2, and alongside Aragorn's ability to give a creature plus 4 plus 4, we're always likely to win that fight if we get to pump our creature before fighting when we cast Domri with Aragorn out, and also gives our creatures one additional power to boot. And then a Faber Elder is also perfect, since we can play it, play Aragorn a turn after, and then the Faber can already make 4 mana, so that can help us double spell to enable Aragorn the turn we play it. The Engineer can also tap for blue and green, and then a Relic of Legends is also great in a deck full of these multicolored legendary creatures, which can now tap for an extra mana, so it can also make it easier to play Aragorn and get immediate value. And then Mirari's Wake is just one of my pet cards, doubling the mana produced by our lands, so it's also good with cards like Gross Spiral and Into the North that put additional lands in play, and then we'll also give the team plus one plus one. Then the next category is Removal, where we have some very efficient one-mana removal spells like Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt. These aren't multicolored, but just too efficient not to play. Then Ancient Grudge is a very efficient way to destroy opposing artifacts, can cast it for 2 mana and flash it back for a single green. Now do keep in mind if we flash it back for green mana, it still counts as a red spell, so it still deals 3 damage with Aragorn, as opposed to giving plus 4 plus 4. Domre's Ambush is also a great removal spell, can go after creatures or planeswalkers, and again, since it's a green spell with Aragorn out, we can make our creature bigger before the fight happens. Similar to Dromoka's Command, this one actually fights, whereas Domre's Ambush simply deals damage equal to the creature's power, but Command also has a flexibility of maybe taking out opposing enchantments or giving us an extra plus one plus one counter. Then Lightning Helix, another Lightning Bolt type effect that also gains three life, but of course a bit nicer with Aragorn out as it's multicolored. Rip Apart is also quite flexible, dealing with an artifact, enchantment, or dealing three damage to a creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed. Then we also get to play with Brutal Cathar, which has a red-white color identity because of the backside being red, so we can finally play it in our four color deck. Then there's a Reflector Mage, which can bounce an opposing creature back, the opponent unable to replay it on their following turn, so that's also a very nice tempo play. Knight of Autumn can blow up artifacts or enchantments when it enters, or maybe get some counters or gain life. Then we've got Lagrella, which can also exile an opposing creature, can maybe exile our own creatures if we suspect that a board wipe is incoming, so we get them back if Lagrella dies. Then Nahiri, another one of my pet cards, can exile enchantments, tapped artifacts or tapped creatures with a minus 2, the plus 2 lets us loot, and then the minus 8 can also be fun to search up an expensive creature and put it in play. 
Then Luca makes it easier to replay Aragorn once it gets removed by adding red and green with a plus one ability to cast creature spells or activate abilities, so that can help pay for the commander attacks. And then the minus one can make beast tokens, and the minus four gives us more removal by dealing X damage, where X is the highest power among creatures we control, so that can also potentially synergize nicely with Aragorn's final ability giving plus four plus four. And then Kogla and Yidaro has the flexibility of discarding it from our hand to destroy an artifact or enchantment while drawing a card, or we can just cast it for 6 mana as a 7-7 with Trample and Haste, or we can fight an opposing creature. And then the next category is Card Advantage, where we have Esper Sentinel, which will tax the opponent, and if they don't pay the tax we get to draw a card. Expressive Iteration, just a nice 2 for 1 in general in this deck, especially when paired with a bit of mana acceleration. Arada can help us play lands of the top of our deck, so we're less likely to flood out, and especially once we have an Aragorn in play, it doesn't really matter what spells we draw, as long as we can cast something, we'll get a ton of value with Aragorn out, so that's usually enough to win the game, but we can also activate Rada's ability to make it bigger. Then Uro could have fit into the first category as well, since it helps us ramp by putting an extra land in play, draws a card similar to Grow Spiral, and also gains some life, but especially once we escape it, it can turn into a very nice card draw engine, and if we cast it late game with Aragorn out, getting to scry before drawing is also very nice. Then Rocco is also great with Aragorn out, as we get to deal 3 damage, make a token, and give something plus 4 plus 4, so that will help us kill the opponent very quickly, especially if they start casting their cards from exile with Rocco's ability, as we now also get an extra plus 1 counter, and at the same time we also get a bit of extra card advantage from exile, so Rocco is perfect here as well. We've got Captain Cisse, which can tap to find a legendary, and there's a ton of great legendaries to choose from, of course. We've got Tamiya, which is one of the more impressive cards alongside Aragorn, as we get to potentially keep things tamped down with the minus 2 ability. We can also draw a ton of extra cards with a plus 1, very nice when paired with a bunch of tokens that we can generate with Aragorn, and we can use this in a ton of different ways, targeting both our creatures as well as maybe the opponent's creatures if they're trying to pressure Tamiya, while we can chum block with our 1-1 tokens. And then a minus 7 is also within reach, and that can also be a very nice omniscience-like ability. And then Omnath, despite being nerfed and costing one extra mana, is still great in this deck as it can trigger all four of Aragorn's abilities while drawing a card when it enters a battlefield. And then with a landfall we can gain more life, potentially even make more mana if we can enable it twice, and that's certainly possible with some of our ramp spells. Then there's a Jani, which can remove an opposing creature with a minus two by exiling it, but then the plus two can also reveal the top three cards of our library and put all non-land permanents among them into our hand, so that can find additional planeswalkers, creatures, enchantments, you name it. And then Itali is also a fun one, 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, casting the first non-land card of each player's library for free. And then the Great Henge, getting a 5 mana discount from controlling Aragorn means we can cast it for pretty cheap, and especially when paired with Aragorn's final ability, giving plus 4 plus 4, we can sometimes play it for just double green, and then it's a great card or engine that also makes more mana and gains more life. Then our next category of cards are ways to protect Aragorn, and that includes a Dovin's Veto, which can counter a non-creature spell, and then maybe make a 1-1 one -one token and scry into in the process. Then the Thopterix will give our legendary permanence a ward 2, making it harder for the opponent to target them. And then a 1-3 with flying and lifelink is also a great recipient of Aragorn's plus 4 plus 4 ability, as we can now gain a ton of extra life. Then there's Pippin, which can also protect our creatures from removal if we tap and then name the appropriate card type. We've got the Bodyguard, which can be sacrificed to make our legendaries indestructible, in addition to giving one extra power. Melira can also be sacrificed to potentially save our creature from a destroy effect. And then the Boots can give our creature Hexproof and Haste if we equip it. And then Arwen is also very fitting here. She can give up her own Immortality by paying one mana and removing her Indestructible counter to make Aragorn indestructible until end of turn, giving it a lifelink counter and a plus one plus one counter as well. And then a Tamiyo doesn't outright protect Aragorn, but it makes it so that if the opponent wants to kill Aragorn, we can simply let it go to the graveyard, on the following turn play Tamiyo for 5 mana, then use the minus X ability for X equals 4, and return Aragorn from our graveyard to the battlefield as a token, and then we can send the real Aragorn back to the command zone, but now we have an Aragorn in play and a Tamiyo at the same time, so that can also be very effective. And then last but not least, our final category includes ways of making it easier to close out the game, even though Aragorn already does a good job alongside any other spell. But we've got Hero of Precinct 1, which shines alongside all these multicolored spells, making extra 1-1 tokens, helping us go wide. Geist of St. Trapped is another fun one that plays quite well with the plus 4 plus 4 ability on Aragorn, so we can keep attacking with it, making flying angel tokens every turn. King Theoden is also perfect, giving a creature double strike whenever it or another human enters a battlefield under our control, and with Aragorn making 1-1 human tokens whenever we cast a white spell, we can potentially give the entire team double strike. 
Then there's a Broker's Ascendancy, giving all our creatures an extra plus one counter each turn, as well as our Planeswalkers an extra loyalty counter, and we've got a decent mix between creatures and Planeswalkers. And of course we get to immediately make a 1-1 token when we cast Ascendancy with Aragorn out that we can start growing. And then the Partners is also very scary once we can give it plus four plus four, because then it can give even more plus one counters and haste to the next creature we play. Then there's the Fleetfoot Dancer with Trample, a Lifelink, and Haste. It's another great recipient of the plus four plus four, as we can convert that into extra life as well. There's a Jet Mirror, which is probably one of our best finishers once we make a few 1-1 tokens with Aragorn, as we can potentially give the entire team Vigilance, Trample, and eventually Double Strike with nine or more creatures in play. And then a Samut is a 3-4 with Double Strike, Vigilance, and Haste, so it can also represent a lot of damage out of nowhere. It can also flash it in as a surprise blocker. And then a Broody Clad I also like, turning our 1-1 humans into potential 2-1 mirror tokens. And we've got some other tokens like the one from Luca, so we can potentially turn all our 1-1s into 3-3s with the Broody Clad in play. And then last but not least, Aurelia the War Leader to give us an extra attack step, and itself a 3-4 with Flying Vigilance and Haste, so also represents a ton of extra damage. And then a mana base has one of each snow-covered basic to search up, Fabled Passage and Command Tower, and then of course one of each of the trial lands, which are also very nice mana fixing. And then I'm also playing all the fast lands in our colors, because we are still a pretty aggressive deck that wants to curve out, so I'm okay with uh, taking the risk of these entering tapped later in the game, if it means getting to play them untapped on turn 2 or 3, which are pretty critical. And then of course all the shock lands in each color, we've got uh, Innistrad duels entering untapped later in the game, and then we also have the Pain Lands, which are worth it, and the Pathways. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, the blue-green ramp deck. And we've got a bit of a ramp ourselves with a Pixie and then Mirari's Wake. So let's give it a shot. Still missing red mana, so that will need to hopefully follow suit. But otherwise, turn one beach, turn two thicket, play Pixie. And as soon as we find one red source, Mirari's Wake can double it. I think still going for Pixie first, because the upside of finding red mana and casting Aragorn is pretty high. Even though we now miss out on a 1-1 token, potentially. Cultivate's nice too, so that we'll find our red mana. Don't have many basic lands left. Opponent does have a blast zone, which could potentially come into play, although they're unlikely to destroy all two drops when they just play the Wolf of Haven and Guardian Idol. Reflector Mage could be useful. I'm thinking we want to get Mirari's Wake going first and then have a big turn with Aragorn and maybe Aurelia in the same turn. Could also go Aragorn plus Hero of Precinct 1, make a token, which wouldn't be bad, but the upside of an early Mirari's Wake is probably higher. Opponent with a Cityscape Leveler, that's too bad, blows up our Mirari's Wake. So now we don't have double red for Aurelia, never mind. Steam Vents to the rescue. And then Reflector Mage pretty good at bouncing the Leveler. So we have how much mana exactly? 5, 6, 7. So it should be enough for Aragorn plus Reflector Mage. And don't think we need any of these. Just looking for more multicolored stuff to trigger Aragorn. Get an attack in. And then Aurelia could be game if we can preserve our board. So Reflector Mage prevents the opponent from recasting the leveler. So they'll have to try something else. Emoti finds a Settle the Wilds. That should be fine. So they get to ramp and find another expensive card. But Aurelia might just end the game here. OK, 
can attack with everyone, get an extra attack step. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Pian Alar. Our hand's serviceable. I could Fable Passage, get a Mountain. Can't quite play turn 2 Bodyguard. But we could turn 2 Helix, and then take it from there. Although we're not having an explosive start with turn 2 Ramp into turn 3 Aragorn. But maybe this is good enough for the Pia matchup when we have an answer lined up already. And then Bodyguard protects Aragorn. And Jatmir should be pretty effective too for going wide. Does the Thopteryx change anything? I think we're still getting a mountain here. And then Pia, we can Lightning Helix. Okay. Paradise Druid I wouldn't be able to play now, since we didn't play Cascade on 1. But that's alright, we're still on track here to maybe play Thopteryx first, which can also protect Aragorn, or we could just go for Bodyguard. Depends whether we prefer getting the effect from a blue and a white creature, or a red and green one once we play Aragorn. So, Intangible Virtue, putting definitely a tokens deck. If we play Bodyguard, we can also block a 2-2, which may be better. Bodyguard does not protect from exile abilities, whereas Thopteryx could at least make it more expensive. Opponent replace Pia. Alright. So no attack. Fabor Elders, interesting too. I think we just go for Aragorn and hope Bodyguard can protect it. And then next turn we get to double spell Faboro with... Let's see, Thopteryx should work. Mox Amber, that's already one extra mana. A Reckless Impulse will trigger Pia. Lightning Bolt, luckily not enough to take out Aragorn. Foundry is also quite good with Pia, turning Thopters into 4-4 tokens. And a Bolt on Bodyguard, so may as well sacrifice it. And a Foundry. So Aragorn should be safe at least. But the Intangible Virtue pumping the Thopters is quite scary. Opponent down to one card in hand. And they could transform Legion's Landing if they're willing to throw something under the bus, or they can just attack with the Ornithopter, of course. Okay. So this can keep making tokens. But now we get to untap with Aragorn. So what's the ideal sequencing? Probably just Fabero plus Thopteryx afterwards. I uh, could play this first to then uh, maybe Scry, maybe that changes our decision. And then playing these white cards makes more tokens, which helps with Jetmir. Don't need any of these. And we'll pump Aragorn himself. And should be fine to attack. Opponent can jump and sack to make a 4-4. Four, four. Valakut Exploration, also great synergy with Pia. And we'll take 5. Opponent reconsiders. Ooh, Omnath. Trigger all of Aragorn's abilities. Pump the lifelinker. And bottom both. Find a Relic of Legends. Okay. So if I play Relic, I can tap that. Still haven't played a land, so yeah, should still be able to play Jetmir. So white, this can make blue, 
and then Omnath can make red. Trigger everything. And what do we want to pump now? Probably still Thopteryx. We should gain Trample here in a second. And we also have Double Strike. All right, so sign me up. Turn the team sideways. Or, well, in the case of Vigilance, it's not quite sideways. Hope there's no instant speed removal to take us off nine creatures. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, that's the power of Aragorn in this deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and it's the mirror match. We have a Paradise Druid to potentially ramp out a turn three Aragorn. So I think we'll keep Dromoka's command to potentially fight. And now a Signet as well. We'll still need an extra land. I guess we'll play Cold Steel Heart now, naming red. And then next turn at the very least I can go Signet plus Paradise Druid. Opponent's got their own Cold Steel Heart. Okay, now we can actually play Aragorn on curve. Or I guess I should say before the curve on turn three. The one ring, that's fine. It's not gonna remove our Aragorn. And now we could look into getting the Great Henge going. Don't have double green for it. If I play Paradise Druid, I can pump Aragorn, give it an even bigger discount. But of course, it doesn't help with a green situation. Yeah, probably keep it at. Arcane Signets, and then maybe a Hero of Precinct 1. Start going wide, and then next turn we can set up a cheap Henge. No point in attacking. And there's the points Aragorn. And the ring draws. And a Catilda, that's fine. The Dromoka's command deals with Aragorn. We'll pump Aragorn even more. So we get the cheapest Great Henge possible. Pump or hero. And then I could still play Samut, which has haste. And then our opponent will throw in the towel already. Too much value here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Saruman of many colors, so it should be a pretty thematic battle. And our hands, not the best in the sense that we don't have an accelerant on turn two, but we've got our colors. A turn two Pippin can protect Aragorn. And then a bit of interaction too. Planeswalker could be harder for the opponent to interact with. And now a Signet is perfect. Although we may still want Pippin in play before we run out Aragorn, we'll see. Let's give Arcane Signet a try. Make it countered. And then we could go Pippin plus keep up Lightning Helix. Faber Elder is also tempting. I think I still like Pippin plus Helix, and then next turn maybe Faber Elder before playing Aragorn. That result. Could have also played a 4 mana Luka, but the red and green doesn't cast Pippin, so we'll see what happens. All right, Poonon taps out for the one ring. So no taking damage next turn. That's fine. Could go for Aragorn. I think going for Fabero and then next turn have access to a ton more mana if we go Aragorn afterwards. Makes sense. And we'll still keep up Lightning Helix. Because I don't mind taking two off Stomping Ground later. And 
And the one ring draws. And draws two more. Could see a board wipe here. A ritual of suits. Yeah, that'll work. I'll wait to play Lightning Helix until after we play Aragorn. Merleaf Pixie is not bad. So we have a few options. Could play a Luka and then still play Merleaf Pixie. Get that going. Could play Aragorn and then either a Helix or Pixie. Although I want to get some more value going in case they have removal for Aragorn. So Luka, I think, makes sense. And then we'll add red and green, play Pixie, or we can just make a beast and then next turn make mana. In case they have removal for Luka. And that way we get more value from Aragorn. And then now we have a creature in place. So if we play Aragorn and a bunch of green stuff, we at least get to pump something. Alright, the One Ring draws three cards. Up to three burden counters as well, so that can add up. Don't know if we'll see Saruman in action anytime soon. Ashok could bounce Luka. Goes for the token instead, which makes sense. So maybe Pixie goes. I think we're going for Aragorn, Lightning Helix, Ashok, and then just make a beast. Okay. Opponent's likely to cast another board wipe, but with the extra mana from Luka, it's not too difficult to replay Aragorn. Surprise, your opponent doesn't have any untapped lands that don't cost life. When they discarded, I guess, Crossroads, they were on the play, so it would enter tapped as well. Sunset Revelry also would have been pretty effective at gaining some life back and making some chum blockers. So Crux of Fate makes sense to wipe the board. And an Uro. Okay, that's nice. So let's make mana. Cast Aragorn, and then we can still play Uro to get some value. Do we want to see Chrome Coast? Not really. Domri might be alright as another Planeswalker. Not too close to escaping Uro. Put on down to 13. Is it finally time for Saruman? Not the best at stabilizing them, but uh, I guess we don't have an enchantment instant or sorcery to discard for Ward. Could also play Lagrella to exile our own Aragorn, so if they cast another board wipe we get Aragorn back. But then if they don't, then it's a little awkward having it in exile. Opponent passes, picked up a Brutic Clad. Okay. So, add mana, play Domri, and then we can add mana again, play Brutic Clad. on the gates. So they could still have another counter spell for Broody Clad. But they also need to make sure they don't die to Aragorn. Ancient Grudge does not destroy the One Ring since it's indestructible, but we could cast it twice just to deal six damage. So maybe that's good enough. Going on Void Rans Aragorn. Hmm. 
and then Brody Clan triggers making a mirror and uh, no need to copy anything else. Could synergize with uh, tokens from Luka potentially, turning everything into 3-3s. Three so opponent's going to fall to 2 from their own ring. Can they find a way out? Kaya can exile our Broody Clad and make a copy. Or just gain 3 life, I suppose. Still not enough to survive on board unless they have some interaction. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, the one ring giveth and the one ring taketh onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Rocco, Street Chef, and our hand seems good. We've got. Early Gross Parrel and Engineer to ramp things out. Can play a tapped Shock Land here. Next turn, play Copper Line Gorge, Gross Parrel. Alright, get these uh, fast lands out of the way. And now we could cast a turn 3 Aragorn already. Yeah. I like it. They might have some white removal, but currently red and green lands in play. And a Rocco we can beat. Tamio would give them a plus one counter, but I don't think we really care. Could also protect Aragorn with the boots first. Tamio seems fun. We can essentially pump Aragorn, make a token, and uh, scry. It's a lot of value. And then a land seems fine. Do we need Pippin? Not really. And then Tamiyo could plus here. Targeting both Rocco and Aragorn. Attack. And then if they want to pressure Tamiyo, then uh, Rocco will also draw some extra card. Could have also targeted my own token, but they might remove that one instead. So there's Bill. Which can sack food to let Rocco deal 6 damage here as opposed to 4. So I'm happy to jump. And then we can use Timeos minus 2 to tap their creatures down. Okay. So we have a lot of options. If I can try and set up a play where we play partners and then a green card afterwards to increase its power, that could be quite devastating. Don't think we necessarily have the mana to make that happen this turn, but we're getting very close. And our opponent concedes already. Yeah, turn 3 Aragorn turns out to be quite devastating. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Tom Bombadil, the Saga deck. So Knight of Autumn should be pretty effective in the matchup, although we're missing some early acceleration here, so the rest of our hand leaves a lot to be desired. I think it's still good enough. Get to play our Aragorn on curve, and then Knight to blow up an important Saga, perhaps. Ooh, nice growth spirals, perfect. So now Copperline Gorge, pathway on blue. And we get to maybe play turn 3 Aragorn after all. Curse of Silence. Okay, so we're gonna have to blow that up before we can play a cheap Aragorn. Otherwise costing 6 mana now. Didn't have the mana for turn 2 Pippin, wanted to Gross Parrel anyways. Is it us in Champion? That's scary. So something we may want to take out with Domri's Ambush as soon as possible. Okay. So can't take out the champion this turn. Unless, let's see. I guess we can go Pippin plus Ambush. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. And 
And then next turn we may play Knight of Autumn on the Curse. Unless a scarier enchantment shows up. Phasing of Jalfir. So they can phase stuff out and then destroy everything, turning them into 2-2 Phyrexians. So we're not going to want to overextend into it. They can pay the ward. So they phased out the curse. So now I can play Aragorn, but of course put under red ahead. So they can already destroy all creatures next turn. Could also Knight of Autumn destroy the phasing itself. And then I can still play Pilgrim, play Sentinel and just pay the extra two mana. Which seems doable. And that lets us apply more pressure this turn. And then Aurelia could be a great finisher. Opponent's missing a few colors for Tom. Passage either gets red or black, but then there's still one short. And we could also slam down Aurelia next turn just by tapping the Pilgrim. Okay, Sigil. Opponent lets us draw. But that can make 4-4 tokens next turn. And Orocco. So we have five, six, seven mana. Yeah, I think just slamming down Aurelia is fine here. And should be able to cast it without tapping Pilgrim. Opponent's at one. So Brushland cannot make colored mana anymore. And our opponent throws in the towel. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Elrond, Master of Healing. And our hand is missing blue mana. So that's going to make it hard to keep. This is better. Um, missing some early acceleration, admittedly. But we've got some early removal to make up for it. And then Arada can help us hit our land drops. We've got a turn 4 Aragorn lined up. Maze Mine Tomb, we can all sorts to Plowshares. Faber Elder, that's definitely the better play now. And this on white seems fine. And then next turn we could go Aragorn into maybe even Luka for 4 mana. Opponent with a 3 mana Elrond, so they get to scry, that's okay. And a Pilgrim, so step one's got to be Aragorn, and we don't want to tap the Elder just yet. So this makes, uh, let's see, green, this makes red. Can hit for 4 before doing anything else. And then second main, we've got four mana. So Luka, and then play Pilgrim with the extra mana, potentially. That could be all right. The extra plus four plus four kind of goes to waste a little bit. But now with the extra mana, from uh, Luka and from Pilgrim, it's going to be easier to deploy a Jani. Alright. Not a bad turn. Opponent's got 4 mana. Could see the Master of Healing in action here. Good with plus one counters. If our opponent were to somehow remove Aragorn, thanks to the extra mana, it's also easier to redeploy 
Although blue-green typically is not going to kill Aragorn, but they may bounce it or have some aura to shut it down. Okay, so we can play a Jani. Probably a good starting point. Opponent may have a counter spell lined up. And pump Faber Elder, which can attack first with Vigilance. Opponent draws. And Jani resolves. And don't think we quite have lethal, although we're getting close. So let's just plus a Jani. They can keep Elrond. Find some more goodies. And let's see, 13. Could remove Elrond with Luca's ability. But then I don't have an instant speed green spell to pump our creatures with. So I can attack. Opponent jumps. And then we can tap Faberow to play Tamio, which helps us diversify in case of a sweeper, although of course blue-green's unlikely to wipe the board. It has to be a reverse rebuke for six mana to bounce everything, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Moldrotha, a Sultai colored graveyard deck. No red for ambush or rada, so I think we mulligan. And this is a little bit better, still missing red, but Got uh, turn two, maybe Sentinel, or we could play Hero of Precinct 1 first. And then Engineer adds quite a bit of mana. Alright, found a red, so could play Bodyguard now. Hero is going to accumulate more tokens if we played earlier. But if I play Bodyguard, then we'll have Aragorn protected the turn we play it. Which is maybe still preferred. Upside of Sentinel is that there's quite a few early ramp artifacts and other ramp spells that could net us a card. Subduel could be a great answer to a commander, so glad they played it on the bodyguard instead. So now time for Engineer. And then next turn we can maybe even double spell Aragorn into Hero or Sentinel. Silvala is going to draw us a card too here as we play Aragorn. So play Aragorn, and then try to keep white mana available. We've got a waste still. Yep, yeah, let's go for Hero over into the north, I think. Alright, let's see if they can answer Aragorn. They do. Maelstrom Pulse. That's okay. Could have been a reason to play Into the North instead of Hero last turn to make it easier to replay Aragorn. But we still have the mana to run it out here. And then I could play a Sentinel alongside it. So play Island first. Get to draw again off Silvala. So it doesn't feel too bad, <laughs> and our opponent throws in the towel already. Yeah, Aragorn provides a lot of value, and uh, if you can ramp it out, and especially if you can protect it as well, it's going to make it very hard for the opponent to win. So I'm quite impressed by this four-color Aragorn deck. The card quality overall is quite high, so you can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the other value decks in the format. But at the same time, our deck is still working towards the same goal. It can still be quite aggressive, and by enabling Aragorn a bunch, we get to add more creatures to the board, pump them up, deal more damage. So it can play both an aggressive role as well as playing nicely into the late game, which is a great place to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.